done the, the film. The first film I did was was was, well, was the shout, you know, which was, worked quite well, I think. Um, although we we, you know, we weren't terribly happy with the way the music was used in the film, but the film was atmospheric and it was quite nice to do. I, I'd always thought, that, you know, what I wrote lent itself to to films, and I was asked, obviously, the, 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 which we may talk about later, but the, the Wicked Lady obviously was the uh, Michael Winner asked me to do that, and uh, and that was fun working with an orchestra. Um, the trouble is, what we found, I found, was obviously none of these films really were very successful. <laughs> so no, nothing kind of led to another one. And I did the, the, the two films I did, which are on soundtracks, <clears throat> one of which called Lawker and the Outlaws, and the other was was uh, Quicksilver. Uh, neither of the films were, were, were successful. So I had this material that had kind of not come out anywhere else. Um, a lot of the actual basic stuff I did at home, um, we did three, there were three songs on this, right, which was... Uh, which were done more sort of, you know, with more kind of uh, production and stuff, if you like. Gave me an opportunity to work with other singers, which is something, you know, obviously I'd worked with Kim Beacon on the first one, but then I'd sung the next one myself. And to sort of just see what could come up and, you know, you kind of ask people, and it's amazing how often people will say yes, actually. Um, so I had, it was suggested to me that, that, that I asked Toya, who at the time I was kind of frightened of because she was from the punk world, she had funny hair and all the rest of it, and I thought, oh, she's not going to be interested in working with me. Anyhow, um, she was, and we, we got together and did this this piece, and she wrote, what was interesting about it, she wrote a whole lyric for the for the song, The Lion and Symmetry, and, and then said she didn't like it, and wrote another whole lyric for it. So she was very conscientious about it. And I, I what I found interesting working with her was I felt that what she'd done up to the, that time when I listened to it, I thought she hadn't really used her voice very much. It was quite limited, you know. And on that, I gave her the ability to sing, you know, all sorts of different kind of styles and things. And it's, a, it's quite an ambitious piece and ridiculously long for the, the sort of 10 and 20 seconds that was actually used in the film. But it was great fun to make and I think it was the, the best track on, on the record, actually, to be honest. So I was quite pleased with that. And then the, I asked um, Jim Diamond. I'd actually originally was, there was a possibility of Julian Lennon doing it, but he... He hummed and hard. He was originally going to do it, and then he didn't want to do it. And then, so anyhow, then it was um, Jim Darman was said, "Yeah, great." And he had a an amazing voice because he could sing so high. And in fact, I'd written the thing in a certain pitch, and really might have been better to have rewritten rewritten it. But by that time, I'd already sort of re recorded half of it before he came on came on. So that was a thing. And then also the other thing was um, on the, was using Fish, who obviously is a kind of kindred spirit coming from a sort of world of sort of progressive music from Merlin who were often accused of being um, a bit too like Genesis sometimes I suppose but uh, it was great fun working with Fish because he although he ended up sounding a bit like Peter his own approach was completely different he was much more he really didn't think about what he sang at all it was what came out was what you had you couldn't do much with it so when I wrote the the, the, the melody line for Shortcut to Somewhere it was very much based around what he um, could sing and came out of his voice naturally, in a way, and that kind of that worked well with him, I think. And uh, you know, he was a, lo a lovely chap, great, great person to work with. I think we got through. I probably said this before. But we, on the day he came down, and we actually worked through the thing in the first place. He got through. I think a whole crate of John Smith's bitter. <laughs> Other beers are available, um, which was incredible, really. He had quite a capacity for that, I think. But a, a good character, and we, we obviously worked later as well, and uh, had a good time on that.